two years into the second edition of Taliban's rule on Afghanistan gives us a better reason to look closely as to how it rose into power, even at the hands of an apparent defeat by the Americans. The world sees the Taliban as an inhumane and fanatic group of leadership. Yet, there is no denying on its grip on power. Images of desperation as Kabul fell back into Taliban hands in 2021. Evacuate, flee, make a run for it. Anything to escape Afghanistan as a bottomless pit that was Taliban rule lay ahead. The Americans had been routed after 15 years in control of Afghanistan. Hundreds of them were killed. Here's decoding the flames that kept the Taliban alive despite apparent pressures, as defined by American political scientist Christian Fair. The George W. Bush administration had blundered way back in October 2001, post 9-11, when it joined hands with Pakistan to oust Pakistan's own assets of sorts, the Taliban. Under the banner Operation Enduring Freedom, American-led forces quickly toppled the Taliban. The Taliban fled to sanctuaries in Pakistan's tribal areas. Many with strong links to the Pakistan army were even given safe passage. Taliban sympathizer Jan Aurakzai, who was appointed to lead Pakistan's forces by then Pak President Musharraf, is said to have helped Osama bin Laden escape from the Tora Bora Mountains to Abbottabad in Pakistan, where he was killed a decade later. The US spent nearly $2.3 trillion in Afghanistan, but who raked in most of this money? Defense contractors. Many of them were Afghan government firms and even Americans themselves. A large chunk of the funds were stolen or spent on poorly executed projects. The Americans even bribed Afghan government officials to act as spies. Credibility of the Afghan government suffered. It worked to the Taliban's gain, and it got the image of a religious, disciplined force. Again, Americans ended up fueling the Taliban insurgency. Keeping in place a weak and failing political system in Afghanistan ensured the Americans the control they wanted. The White House seemingly deliberately kept the Afghan polity a system characterized by fragmentation and illegitimacy. No political parties, no parliament in the way to deal with, and a president, in this case Hamid Karzai, who would rubber stamp US objectives. As soon as the Americans decided to walk away, this was a system waiting to fall apart and fall into Taliban hands. Switch back to the present day. Despite global condemnation and local disapproval, there's no real threat to the Taliban regime in sight. A struggling economy remains afloat even as sections of the international community, including powerhouse China, are keen to reach out diplomatically and for strategic gain. All these are reasons enough for Taliban 2.0 to celebrate, despite the situation for the common man going downhill. And America's mishandling does show through.